Good morning, and today we're gonna talk about trumpet players. So, thinking about how y'all play, we have an instrument that is in the front of our bodies, right? I need you guys to get in touch with me and um, help me with a little more knowledge about how you play. Where's the weight? I'm not sure if the weight is equally distributed or not, but based on posture uh, and some feedback I've gotten, this workout is gonna help you avoid any of the uh, typical muscle compensations you get as a result of playing the trumpet and uh, keep you injury free hopefully. So first couple things we have to note: the instruments in the front of your body so the weight is in front of your body. So we've got the muscles of the neck, muscles of the chest, shoulder, bicep all working really hard right overworking, underworking just how it is. So the first thing we're going to do is if you have a <clears throat> Sorry, if you have a lacrosse ball, this is great. If you have a golf ball would work, but it would be painful. Um, if you have a tennis ball, a racquetball, generally a lacrosse ball works well because it doesn't mush, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of give to it, and that's what you want. And what we're gonna do, it's like, it's a little bit of self-massage. You're looking for tender points in your chest. Why your chest? Because your chest, like we said, is what's working harder than your back. And so that can lead to muscle compensations where we have pulled forward, the head gets pulled forward, the core gets shut off, this gets weak. It leads to something called forward head posture and or upper cross syndrome, which can lead to other things. So we're gonna start by finding some tender points in your chest. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And if you don't have that, don't worry. When you do, you can use it. So this is how you do. You're gonna find, uh, find your sternum, then find your clavicle, okay? I want you to come mm, two, three fingers down from your clavicle and over about the same amount. And right in there, you might start feeling like I got one right here, something tender. You might find something tender here or down by your armpit. You're gonna take your ball, put your arm behind you, up against a wall, and you're gonna roll, okay, like that. You're gonna roll looking for those tender points. Be gentle. Please do not roll over your sternum. Don't roll up here. Don't be like rolling on any kind of a bone, okay? And if you've got a bruise or something, please don't roll over that. Generally, uh, you don't wanna roll over a bone. You don't wanna roll over a joint. And if you have a varicose vein or something like that, you don't wanna roll over that. I think we have to worry about veins up here, okay? So you're gonna roll around, see if you find, oh, I got one right there. Okay, so I feel like I've got something right here. You want to get right in the middle of that tender spot. Oh, don't hold your breath, by the way. Don't lock your knees, don't hold your breath. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, you want to get right in the middle of that tender spot. Breathe, relax, count to 30. Don't press so hard that you tense up because on a one to 10 pain scale, you never want to be above a seven because then you kind of clench it, it doesn't do you any good, right? Now, you can, if you want, you can roll right around on your anterior delts. You can get even in your medial delts. That, it's not pleasant, but you can use it for there too. Um, it's a lot harder to get your biceps and stuff, but you're gonna do both of those. Now, moving on, if you don't have, if you say you don't have a lacrosse ball, that's fine. We also need to worry about your neck because you are holding this in front and you're gonna have to come towards the instrument at some point. So the neck actually does a lot, it's part of your core, it's trying to stabilize the weight of your head over the center of your body. And playing the trumpet offsets that. So, you ever had a massage and they, they, they get on the back side of the neck, right? Well, they never get on the front side. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something called an SCM smash. And you can do that with your fingers like this, okay? What you're gonna do is look right in front of you, turn your head to the left or the right, you see this muscle that goes from uh, right at the um, part of your clavicle all the way up to under, it starts underneath your, uh, your ear on your skull. It turns your head from side to side. You look in the mirror, you can find that spot. You're gonna just get a pinch in between your fingers. Right, touch, pinch. You're looking for tender points. You don't have one, that's fine with the next. Ooh, be gentle. Don't go smashing in your neck. Remember we got veins and arteries and stuff? Okay, so, not <laughs> to freak you out, but if you find this muscle here, you wanna make sure 
you are only on that muscle. That's why I said turn your head and look at a mirror. You'd be able to see it better, right? Yeah, you touch right through there. Woo. Now, I got a spot right there. Be gentle. You might find it's difficult to do because it wants to roll. Right there. Oh. I'm getting a little bit of referred pain up in my nose. This is a muscle that can cause uh, headaches big time, especially if, if you're not aware that it can be over tight. Horn players deal with this a lot too. Heck, we all do flute players big time. Ooh. Especially anybody who turns their head to the left or the right, one way or another. You want to hold and press. Now, like I said, if you have a, uh, if you find that tender point, you want it to be less than seven on a one to 10 pain scale, okay? So, you're gonna hold that until the pain goes down from wherever it is, hopefully down to a one or less until it goes away, but be gentle, okay? So now that we've released those, we're gonna stretch those real quick. The first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna stretch your chest and then we're gonna strengthen your neck, the muscles on the inside and the back that help stabilize, okay? So, we're gonna stretch your chest, you need a doorway, all you need to do, put your arm at 90 degrees in the doorway so you get some stabilization, right? I want you to squeeze your shoulder blade back and down, okay? Looks like this. You're gonna squeeze, see where my finger is? Squeeze this way. So bringing that shoulder blade back and downward. You're gonna hold your shoulder right there, squeeze, and then twist, okay? Squeeze, twist, hold. You should feel a really nice stretch right through here. If you don't feel much of anything, come up a little higher, maybe not way up here, but come up a little bit higher. <sighs> Squeeze, twist, hold. Now, if you get any kind of tingling or anything, back off a little bit. So you don't want to come out this way and get so much that you feel lots of tingling. You might get some blood flow feeling. Ooh, I know, that feels nice. So squeeze, twist, hold. 30 seconds is what you want to do, okay? 30 seconds either here for pec minor, which is down by your armpit, or pec major, which is here, okay? Hold, squeeze, twist. Count to 30. Relax. All right. So before we move on to the neck, there is somebody had mentioned to me who's a trumpet player that she had some shoulder impingement. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys if any of you trumpet players do have shoulder impingement problems. Uh, we're going to address that in a later video where we're actually using more equipment. But it just occurred to me that you know I, would, I need to get some feedback from you guys whether she didn't know if that was a systemic thing or was just up to her. And I would love to know if so. And so, we're gonna do a video where we address that when we get some equipment. So, we've stretched the chest. Now we need to strengthen the neck, okay? Oh, we have one more to do. I'm sorry. We gotta stretch your biceps. Why? Because they hold your shoulder and your bicep. These two muscles right here. Anterior delts, your shoulder, they lift your arms this way. Your bicep curls this way. The two of them do exactly that for you to play trumpet, right? Here's how you do that. If you're still in the doorway, and you can do this on a wall, so say you did here, next thing, out like this. Oh my gosh, that feels good. Okay, thumb up against the wall. I get a lot of people asking, you mean like this or this? Nope, thumb side to the wall. Literally, did the Egyptian go straight out, twist away. Here we go. So, right up against the wall, straight arm, twist away. And it's a little different than what you might have seen where, you know, when you're in the doorway just going forward. This is not a passive thing. The twisting is what creates that tension. And you might feel some tension right here, some tightness. That's how you know you're, you're stretching, that you're in the right spot. Now, if either of these stretches or any of these things, you, you don't find anything, or if a muscle doesn't feel tight, don't stretch it. Don't ever stretch something just because someone says you need to. If it's not tight, don't stretch it, okay? 30 seconds again, both sides. All right, now we're gonna deal with your core. So, I'm gonna bring you down here. Just a couple exercises for that. <clears throat> so, chin tucks. Not sure if you guys have seen these before. Any better. Chin tucks. All right, so you have muscles on in your neck, obviously, right? Okay, but the muscles that go along the inside of your neck, this is called your longus coli. It goes, if you think about your 
the muscles in your, I'm sorry, the bones in your spine on your neck, these are the muscles that lay flat on the back. They stabilize your neck when you're going backwards. So chin tucks look like this. Tuck back off. That should feel really nice right here, okay? Tuck, hold. Oh, that's wonderful. You get a really nice feeling in the back of your neck, back here, nice stretch hold. Do not mash your head into the floor, okay? Tuck, hold. Maybe five to ten, really easy. Two, three second hold. Okay? And then from there, we're going to do a tuck lift, and that will strengthen that muscle. So we get this. You're going to get the right angle here. Tuck, lift, hold, two, three, down. Now, the reason we're doing a tuck, hold, lift, because if you just lift, you're going to do this. You don't need any more of that, okay? So, like this, tuck, lift, two, three, and then back down. Now, if you can go longer, like five seconds, great. If you're really weak, you've been in car accidents, you've been playing a long time, don't be discouraged if, uh, <clears throat> sorry, don't be, don't be discouraged if you can't do this for very long. So again, here we go, we're going to do a couple of them. So we're going to tuck. Lift, two, three, four, back down, you don't have to go far, tuck, lift, keep holding and back down, make sure you don't hold your breath. Okay, then we have a core exercise, all right, this is called toes to ceiling, because I can't think of another name for it, and this is going to get down here, okay, so what we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, what we're going to do is you're going to lay flat on your back. You're going to bring your toes straight to the ceiling. This is not like a reverse crunch where you go back and forth. This is literally toes straight up, and it, you're just going to do that. If you can't lift your butt off the ground at all, doesn't matter. You might not even see anything. You, can like, you feel you're doing something, but you're not moving. You're still getting the intended effect. We're trying to strengthen the transverse abdominus and the rectus abdominis and all these muscles down here, way low, right below your belly button, we're trying to strengthen these. And you don't have to have a whole lot of movement for this to be effective, okay? So this is how this works. You're gonna lay flat, toes straight up in the air. Okay, first thing to remember, belly button pulls straight to the floor, up. I want you to find a spot on the ceiling, point your toes at it, try to touch it. Try to touch it, try to touch it. Notice I'm not doing this, okay? You're going straight up. You're trying to get as little momentum as possible. Woo, okay? I want you to do that for a minute if you can. If you can't, do it as long as you can. Or if you don't have a timer, you can just count, okay? That's fine, and you can do 10 to 15. And we have a cameo from Levi. Hey, bud. All right, we have only a couple more exercises left, and that's to strengthen your upper back. For obvious reasons, because we just talked about how the front of your body gets overused, right? The back of your body might, you might get a, a big old knot back here. Hey, look. You get a cameo from the piggy man. So you might, uh, you might get a knot back here, but it's more because this is too tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strengthen that area. So here we go, we have a couple options. <clears throat> now, what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a couple versions. So if you have a broom, if say you're at home, you're doing this. If you're at, you have a broom, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it just like this. Okay, feet are hip width apart, belly button in. You're gonna come up, go straight back. You know what, I'm gonna hit the wall. <laughs> Look around. So, out, up, push. Oh my gosh, that feels good. <laughs> that feels so good. Okay, just like this. Now, the thing to remember is, you don't wanna come too far back. So, if I go right here, I can rotate without having to move up and down or shut my head or move anything. Straight here to here, row up. So you want to see I'm covering my ears? That's what you want. Here to here. So if you can do it against a wall, it's even better because the wall is going to prevent you from going too far back. 
what I see a lot of is this. And oh, hey, it won't work. Or I, people don't want to keep your arms up or they go too far back. And if you go too far back, it's going to smack you in the face, right? No good. So I want you to 10 to 15 of these if you can do it. Squeeze up. This is what it looks like from the back. Here, here, here. Oh my gosh. All of those muscles feel so good. Now, if you're in a spot, you don't have brew, never fear, I gotcha. So what you're gonna do, we have two different versions we can do. We have a wall angel and a scarecrow, and they look like this. Scarecrow is just, <laughs> my kitten just attacked the other one. So the scarecrow looks just like this. Because if I stood up, I'd look like a scarecrow, right? Now you're not shrugging, what you are doing, Roll those shoulders back for him. Roll back and squeeze, and then come up. It's like you're bringing your elbows straight to the ceiling. Well, I'm bent this way, so straight to the ceiling, okay? It looks just like what we were doing, right? Here to here to here. That would be the next step. If the broom is too easy, do it prone. Prone meaning you are bending forward from the hips. You're not rounding, but forward from the hips. Here, here, here with the broom. But we're doing this assuming you don't have a broom, so it looks just like this. Here to here, and back down. Here to here, back down. You should feel this all along here. Okay, I want you to squeeze those shoulder blades together. What I see a lot of is this. Looks like that, uh-uh, we're going straight out. This is not a scarecrow, is it? Check yourself in the mirror, straight out, scarecrow, okay. 10 to 12, maybe 15, do them real slow. Uh, you can add weight if you want, but just do them real slow and I think that's, that's gonna be plenty, plenty challenging. The second part of that is a wall angel. These go by several different names. Looks like this. Do we have enough room? All right, so you're up against the wall like this. You're gonna press your elbows into the wall and push up, press, push up, okay? Don't press really hard, not hard enough that you're arching your back, but just press, and sometimes just the pressing motion can feel good, okay? So you're gonna press up until the point where your hands come off the wall. Now, if all of these are just too much, and say you're coming out of an injury, or you do have some impingement problems and things just don't feel good, and you don't have any equipment, no worries, we can still do one more exercise and that's called a cobra. I don't know why this is called a cobra. It seems like a really dumb name to me. Anybody knows, let me know. But it looks like this, okay? You're gonna stand with your feet up-width apart, belly button and chest up, squeeze your shoulders back. It's like when you, when you get up in the morning, you go, Ugh. instead of this business, you just go, Ugh. you're just stretching out here, but we're also gonna Strengthen this. You're gonna roll back, squeeze, squeeze. Like, like you're a dolphin. I have a client who calls these dead dolphins. It was Halloween, whatever. So you're gonna roll back like you're trying to touch the backs of your hands together. We go just like this. Squeeze and come back forward. Now, if you're doing this right, you're not gonna arch your back, okay? Squeeze your butt, squeeze your belly button, come in, squeeze, relax. We got a whiny cat here. Squeeze and back. Squeeze, and back. That's it for the trumpet workout. Like I mentioned, I would really love some more feedback from you guys when it comes to trumpet. I, uh, I have a survey out where I'm asking about your different, uh, your experiences with playing your instrument. Have you ever had an injury? What was that injury? Did you see anybody for it? Have you ever been told not to play? You know, what are your experiences in this realm? And if you have, if you've watched this video and you're like, yeah, that works really great, or no, I didn't like that, or hey, I have this injury, what do I do about it? Please get in touch with me because I would love some more feedback from actual trumpet players, okay? So I need some more information, and thank you for joining me today. 